Greetings, friends, frenemies, and audio electronics thrill seekers. On the messy bench today, I want to take a look at some transistors I found. See if I can use them for audio projects. I've been looking for a uh, mid power type transistor that has uh, good gain characteristics. I could use, you know, something inexpensive. That's one thing. Um, like a TO220 style, something fairly small, easy to use, doesn't cost a lot. And I found these uh, D44VH10s and the complement D45VH10. And they have pretty good specs, I think. And I want to do some tests. Okay, let's take a look at the data sheet. Now these are meant for switching purposes, but that's okay. We could use them for other purposes. If they so fit the application, they have a 15 amp collector current, 83 watts dissipation, which I always kind of question in a TO220 type case. 80 volts collector emitter, so, you know, not for real high power amplifiers. And uh, we'll see here momentarily that uh, they'll be limited a little more. 50 megahertz FT. They're pretty fast transistors. The output capacitance is pretty good as well. 120 picofarads and 275 for the uh, PNP version. But still, that's... Uh, quite a bit lower than usual. This is what I like to see here, the, uh, the current gain over the various collector currents. And you can see that they have a nice linear characteristic, great for audio. You see that a lot with the audio specific transistors. So what I like to do is see where the gain is at around three amps. That's probably where I would use these transistors. You also look at the voltage they're testing at. They have a VCE of 1 on the upper graphs and 5 on the lower set of graphs. And look how high it is. Over 100 at the 3 amp line. The uh, PNP version, which is the 45, it's uh, still pretty high. It's a little under 100. Now that one is uh, 25 degrees. C line is over 100 at the one volt line it's looks like it's around 90 or so that's very good so those what i would call very audio friendly type curves great for audio amplifier projects now looking at the safe operating areas where the transistors are not really meant for high power use so i like to follow the one amp line here out See where it intersects the safe operating area curve. And the 1 amp line is around 20. That would probably be around, it's a logarithmic graph, so it's probably around 21, 22 volts. That's the DC line. So they're not going to be like the 2SC5200. You know, those are 250 volt transistors much better safe operating area. Yeah, so these transistors look interesting for audio projects. For example, I can have an op amp driving an output stage containing these things directly without drivers because, you know, they have plenty of gain. But I want to run some tests on these and, you know, compare them to some other res uh, transistors I have. So I have this little circuit here. I have 12 volt supply in a 50 watt light bulb it's a 12 volt 50 watt bulb there in the collector circuit across the collector emitter i'll measure the voltage i want to set the uh, current to around six volts that way i can you know be measuring under the same conditions because if you have a different voltage across the collector emitter the gain could calculate a bit different so I want to make sure that's the same 
and uh, at that voltage, it'll be about 2.8 or yeah, 2.8 amps passing through the transistor, which is close to the three amps. And the base circuit here have an adjustable voltage going through a 1K resistor, and I just calculate current by measuring the voltage drop across the res the uh, 1K resistor because. For every volt drop is one milliamp through the resistor there. So from that I can calculate the gain, see how these things are performing. So I have a few transistors to test with here. So here's the circuit actual, actually set up on the board. And like I say, I have the bulb here. And this will be supplying the 12 volts to the collector circuit, and this will be uh, the adjustable supply. You can just twiddle the dial there and measure it here and uh, compare it to some other transistors I have. So without further ado, let's get underway. Okay, I'm taking the measurement right at the pins and tab of the transistor because... The socket board might have losses, so we're around 6 volts there, if I can keep my, uh, come on, if I can keep my probes on there. I'll have to fine tune it, I can't do all this with my hands all in use here holding a camera. So around 6 volts, and we're putting in nine milliamps, a little over nine. And uh, it's actually 2.63. So yeah, let me fine tune this and come back with the results. Okay, so here's the results. The collector current was 2.61 amps. And the base current was 9.2 milliamps for a current gain of 284. So yeah, that's pretty darn impressive. Pretty high gain. And uh, yeah, that could be quite useful in audio circuits. Like I say, driving an output stage directly off of an op amp. Small signal gain is 222. It's lower because this has cooled off. And sometimes at really low currents, the gain can drop as well. That's why you see some curves, gain curves that go like this. But these were fairly flat, so like I say, they could be pretty good for audio tinkering circuits like I like to play with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is try some other transistors, see how they stack up. Next transistor, I have an MJE3055. Now, these transistors are funny because some of them will have high gain and some of them have low gain. The older ones I have have lower gain. And some newer ones I bought, uh, I don't know, a few years ago, have a lot higher gain. You can see here, this one's 67. So let's pop it in the little test jig and see what it comes out as. Well, this one went off scale for my voltage supply. I had to set it for 30 volts, and I still couldn't get a good reading, so I lowered this resistor to 100 ohms. So now I'll try it and see if I can uh, get a reading from this transistor. Obviously, its gain is much lower. Okay, I tested two MJE3055s. One had a Motorola marking, and the other, I think that's a Fairchild marking. And, you can see the difference there. One's gain is 57, the other is 150. 150 is not bad at all, but, you know, about three times as much. And, uh, I don't know if you have any control of, you know, from what bins you get, what gain bins. But when using these transistors, you have to kind of be careful because the gains can vary widely. So it 
may or may not work in a circuit as well. You know, if you're replacing one, you know, from an older device, the gain your the gain of the original part's probably going to be lower than the newer transistors. So uh, yeah, you kind of have to watch that. So I'll test at least another transistor here and come back with the results. Okay, so here are the results. I did an FJP5200, which is same as the 2SC5200, but it's in a TO220 package. These are the R grade, not as high as gain as the O grades. I'd recommend the O grades for the audio amplifier output stages, but you can see here it came in at 83, and that's pretty much right what I would expect. I also did, the in, or I'm sorry, the PNP versions of these transistors, the complements. So the D45VH10, I still got a respectable gain of 200. Just like the data sheet, the gain is a little bit less in the PNP, but it's still way up there. Yeah, uh, that kind of gain at that kind of current for these uh, $1 transistors, yeah, that's not too bad. I uh, had a Fairchild MJE2955, which complements the 3055, and that one came in at 97. So, uh, yeah, a little bit less than the, in the yeah, the NPN version. Uh, next was the R-grade FJP. I didn't write that down right. Put the P in there. FJP 1943. Um, gain of 102. So yeah, it's in the ballpark of what I would expect. If you get the O grade version of these transistors, you'd get a lot higher gain. Like I said, uh, that's what I'd recommend in the output stages. But anyhow, yeah, pretty impressive gain for these uh, D45 and D44 VH10 transistors. And uh, yeah, they're pretty inexpensive. They're around a dollar. It might be, depending on the quantity, it might be a little bit more, but they're pretty inexpensive. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, put a signal, put a square wave in and uh, scope the collector uh, see how these transistors perform. You know, we see how the speed of them operate here. Okay, so now I'm putting a square wave into these things. 100 kilohertz. Using the feel tech. And this circuit's not really great. I'm not practicing proper probing and all that. I just want to get an idea here. No bypass caps or anything. So yeah, look at that. Let's check the supply rails. Yeah, a lot of junk in the trunk there. Needs bypassing and everything, but I got all these long leads and everything. and Just can't be bothered. I'm just kind of doing a comparison. So all that junk and ringing there is not really from the transistor likely because of uh, the setup I have. Okay, so now I have that Fairchild MJE3055. Had a pretty good gain. See what it looks like. Man, it's definitely slower. Yeah, it doesn't have the fast enough rise times to generate all that ringing. And it's... Uh, of course, the bulb's not as bright. I have the field tech cranked up as high as I can on its output voltage, so. Yep, not as good. So are we recording this time? I have to remember to press the button. Yeah, I'd take that performance test, you know, the speed performance with a grain of salt. It's not really a properly set up test. 
I just wanted to compare a couple transistors real quick. Need a much better circuit to do that. But yeah, considering the gain, the reasonable speed of these things, these are very interesting transistors, these D44 and 45 VH10s. I think I'm going to tinker with these in some audio circuits. Like I said, you know, I can drive these direct from an op amp because they have plenty of gain. In the past, some of the other transistors I used, direct drive, were just, you know, right at the limit. You know, no headroom. So these might perform much better. I'm sure they will. But, I'm going to leave it at that. And I thank you for watching. On the bench here, I have the uh, Carver M-400. The other video I had the 400T, but now I'm working on this one. This one has some different issues, but I got some parts in to finish up the 400T, so I'll uh, I run some tests on it and hopefully call it done. And I don't know if you want to see any more of these Carver amps, but if I can make a video on this one as well. It has its issues, so yeah, working on that. But I guess we'll wrap it up here, and uh, thanks for watching.